So one of the big remaining questions from that story is, does this still happen today? The Minister in Charge of the SIS is Andrew Little. Last night he declined an interview on the issue. But this afternoon he spoke with Guy Onespiner, who began by asking him about the SIS breaking into the Czech embassy to steal the Warsaw Pact codes. It was certainly news to me. I hadn't heard of that before. But then it didn't really surprise me because at the uh, the height of the Cold War, all sorts of things were happening uh, between countries, between countries in the East and and us in the West, uh, trying to keep a track of what was going on. Um, And particularly at the time of uh, Mikhail Gorbachev's elevation, uh, the West was particularly interested to know what was going on with a view to influencing him. And and, the West takes credit for for trying to do that. Have you been asked to sign off on warrants from the SIS to break into foreign embassies in New Zealand? Look, it's not appropriate for me to give any comment about um, any warrants that I've signed off on and and what the content may or may not be. I have the power to sign off warrants to allow our agents and agencies to conduct operations in the interest of national security. That's part of the job I do. Uh, The more serious ones and ones involving New Zealanders, and uh, it's not just me, it's also a commissioner of warrants who, who's a retired High Court judge. Um, but that, that is spelled out in, in the Intelligence and Security Act, um, and that is what I do. So does New Zealand and its SIS still break into foreign embassies in Wellington? Well, what I can say is our agencies comply with the law. Um, that includes international law that's incorporated into our domestic law, We have a much more rigorous oversight regime now than I think ever existed 30-odd years ago. Uh, We have a much more beefed-up Office of the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security. Uh, You also have the um, much more prescriptive warranting regime that we have in the Intelligence and Security Act. Um, We have the Intelligence and Security Committee of Parliament, admittedly uh, made up of senior members of parliament, including ministers, but there's a high degree of oversight that I don't think was present, not just 30 years ago, but actually you know, even 10 or even five years ago. Sure. But you can't rule out that the SIS still breaks into foreign embassies? Well, I, obviously, I wouldn't comment on any operational uh, matter that um, our agencies might be dealing with, how they go about it and what they do. I think most New Zealanders expect in a country like ours that's interacting with the rest of the world, that has a set of interests that need to be protected. They want our agencies focused on national security and those interests. They want that, you know, that to be in accordance with the rule of law. It is. Our agencies comply with the law and they do so under some pretty rigorous oversight. Mm. Are you comfortable with the intelligence service breaking into foreign embassies? Um, well, I'm comfortable that we have an intel- uh, intelligence agencies that do a very good job of protecting national security. They do a whole range of things. They deal with uh, with espionage. They deal with counterterrorism. They deal with um, our uh, economic interests too, to make sure that they're not being undermined. Big area now is cyber security. Um, they have the power to take appropriate action to protect national security under the legislation. They do that where necessary under warrant. I sign off those warrants. I'm very satisfied that what they do uh, is not only within the law but is fully justified, which is a requirement of the law. And that was SIS Minister Andrew Little speaking with Guyon Espiner.